everyone. Thanks for joining us here today virtually. I am Kyle, a deacon intern at Nativity Lutheran Church and coordinator of our community outreach teams. I have the privilege of introducing to you Steve Label. He has over 17 years of global ministry experience at Nativity. And today would like to share with you one of the very wonderful and fascinating projects he's been working on for quite some time. So Steve, take it away. Thank you, Kyle. We're bringing up a PowerPoint presentation and we're referring to this particular presentation as Church to Church and highlighting an event that happened for myself in the last few years. And that is meeting a man by the name of Jeremiah and working with uh, Jeremiah and with a church that he represents that is in Kenya, Africa. Uh, Jeremiah was born in Kenya, which is in Eastern Africa. And he has lived in the United States for many years. He came here as a young man. He's been able to further his education. He's uh, had a very good career as a counselor at a public university. Uh, he's a married individual and has children who are now adults having uh, completed college in the area. And uh, most important in terms of our meeting each other is that Jeremiah is a member of a Rotary Club of Rotary International. As I got to know Jeremiah a little better, I learned a few things about Kenya. It's a country near the equator in Eastern Africa. But I even learned more about the village area where Jeremiah was born, uh, where he grew up, and where he still has family to this day. As you can see from the map, uh, we're talking about Western Kenya. Uh, there's an arrow there in pointing to Kericho, which is a geographic area in Kenya, and an interesting uh, a geographical feature in this part of Kenya is the small lake that's at the tip of the arrow. Uh, this is a lake that is a uh, perfect habitat for flamingos and it is the home to thousands and thousands of flamingos. And if you've ever seen travel logs about Kenya and some movies about Kenya where there's been scenes with a huge lake and uh, hundreds or possibly thousands of flamingos uh, that's very close to the home area for Jeremiah. As we got to know each other better uh, through our periodic uh, being at meetings together, I learned some things about the village where Jeremiah was born and where he still visits periodically to visit family. Uh, it's in a rural area uh, within a five mile radius of where the uh, school is uh, in the area. There's probably two or three thousand people living, but there is no city center. There are very few stores or any type of uh, facilities. And in particular, there are no medical facilities. Uh, for shopping of any consequence or for medical facilities, uh, the villagers have to go about 40 miles on a not so good road and most of them do not have their own transportation. So it is a, a bit of a hardship to get to medical services as well as other types of amenities. One of the things that became clear to me as, we, as I learned more about the village and the people that live there is that the young women in the area of uh, high school, school age, could probably benefit from a program that's called Days for Girls. And Days for Girls is a movement that provides uh, female hygiene items uh, for girls in areas where they're not, uh, these items are not readily available. So what is a DFG kit? It is uh, very simply the female hygiene items, uh, pads that are uh, made by groups of women at sewing events 
Uh, the pads are washable, can be reused, so they're very economical once you have the basic kit. Uh, the kit also includes a carrying bag and uh, soap and underwear and the things that uh, a young lady would need to keep herself uh, clean during the uh, monthly period. Uh, Nativity through the group Women in Action has had quite a number of sewing events over the past few years. Uh, kits have been made for Madagascar, kits have been made for Bangladesh, so it was just a natural evolution to make some kits and donate them to the uh, village where Jeremiah lives. Uh, his wife, Bernice, was able to come to the event where we made kits for Kenya. And I think you can tell from the image that the participants are having a very good time. And uh, it was a real joy to put these kits together and have uh, Jeremiah and Bernice bring them to Kenya, what they traveled there. And Bernice was able to be, uh, recruit the educators in the village and a class of young ladies and you can tell that the kits that were made at Nativity have uh, traveled uh, uh, 8,000 miles to Kenya and to Caricho. And the young ladies there are very thrilled to have these supplies available. Here's another image of the young ladies uh, taking a closer look at the contents of the kit. And um, you can see that they're quite interested in uh, learning more about uh, the items that are available. After this event, we continued the conversation about what else we might do to help the village, and in particular, the issue of capacity for a health clinic uh, to serve the many people that live in the area that don't currently have access to good health facilities. And we're very fortunate in Nativity. We have uh, a resource that's called the Palmer Hermitsley Fund. And this is a fund that provides on occasion seed money to new projects. We were able to get a seed money project approved and Jeremiah was able to use that money to leverage it to get other funds from Rotary International and other organizations, travel to Kenya and start construction of a community center that would include a health clinic. Uh, construction in Kenya, especially in the rural areas, is very labor intensive. Uh, there's not a lot of machines. There's uh, not easy access to electricity or power tools. So a lot of the work is done by hand. A side benefit of the project is that it created jobs in the village. A number of villagers were able to make uh, some uh, money uh, that uh, they would not otherwise have had a chance to earn and they were able to help develop the clinic. You can see that the construction is mostly cement block construction. So there's a lot of lifting and toting. There's a lot of plaster and cement work that goes on. There's a lot of rebar that goes into the concrete. And so it takes a lot of labor. In fact, it took more labor than we had money for so we were quite uh, thrilled when a number of the villagers just decided to volunteer to help with the project. So some of the workers were paid and many of them were also volunteered for this uh, community project that everyone supported. Over the course of a few months, uh, we were able to go from nothing uh, for a medical facility to a very nice clinic. And it's not grandiose by USA standards, but it is uh, very much of a treasure to the community. It's something that uh, they will be taking care of and benefiting from for quite a number of years. The next steps in the process are to develop education and to further provide equipment and supplies for the clinic so that it becomes a very efficient and effective uh, healthcare facility. Along the way, after we completed the construction of the clinic, 
there was a special joy that we had not anticipated, and that was Jeremiah and his wife Bernice were singled out for recognition by Rotary International. And recently we were at an event where they were honored and presented with the Paul Harris Award. This is an award given by Rotary International to uh, people like Jeremiah and Bernice that have been persistent and diligent and hardworking in terms of helping and serving others. So we had the joy of attending this event. And I think you can tell from the picture that uh, they were quite humbled and quite happy to have been recognized in this manner. And with that, I'd like to uh, thank the people at Nativity for supporting all the works that we do at Nativity and in particular the support for global mission through prayers through volunteer help and also through financial resources so i thank you for that and i extend to you the thanks from jeremiah and bernice thank you